all the time. There's no doubt in me. But sometimes I. Good afternoon, everybody, present and those listening online and viewing. I would just like to do a tribute here to Mick, especially to the, his family, his family, all friends, relatives, close family, those aboard, those near, and especially Sensi and the Honorable Dr. Terence Jew, who I've known for over 20 and 30 years. So I would just like to do this tribute, just a little something I wrote about Mick in the form of a poem, so I would just like to do it now for the friends and family. When we are born into this world, we are but merely passing through. But when our loved ones are departed, we don't know what we'll do. This time around, it's a very special situation. Absent in body, but forever present in spirit as an icon. He begged and pleaded to the operator for that overseas number and had to explain that he really loved her. When he called, 
a male voice said, you better stay over there. Asking, but why? The answer he got was, she's not there. I didn't tell you to live that way and end up behind the walls of 1840. You were out here good, but insisted on being very naughty. Now the commissioner say, you now get no bail. You're begging me for music to make you shake your jailbird tail. Blessed with many talents, too much to run dry. He passed on some to Sister Sensia and told her to sew high. He was destined to put St. Kitts Nevis on the world map since he started walking. You thought he was a one-shot man, but listen closely to Liamiga calling. So much love he always had for his brass band. But on those cold and lonely days, his first choice was always Pam. He took a break from the stage and focused on repairing jewelry. But the world match icon show had to include Uncle Mickey. If you think you know about more old school than him, just try it. Put your money where your mouth be and meet him on Radio Market. You would get the full story and even hear him sing. What song you ask? Man, all kind of thing. Flawlessly playing the drums, walking up and singing song after song. I don't know where he got the energy, but he could go on all night long. So much achievements, always full of joy and laughter. Just when you thought he did it all, his son is now our honorable prime minister. Plenty love and always treating his family well. He thought he could get away, but had to play Dolly House with Krishel. Superstar, icon, legend, this man is no joke. He is now in the hands of the Lord, Michael Mickey Stokes. All right, so we're gonna have a song while the Paul Bearers bring my daddy up, and we're gonna be doing a viewing for just one half hour. So for those of you who would like to see him for one last time, this is the time you get to see him. We're asking that when you come, you don't stay too long so that others behind you can get that chance. We also wanna let you know there will be no picture taken. So just if you wanna see him for one last time, like I said, you can come and you can't stay too long because I know a lot of you guys love him and would like to spend a little time with him, but it's time for my dad to rest in peace, so we are allowing you to see him for one last time.
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind that takes the time to help us change you in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And if you lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days down here are through There's a place up there for people like you Walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you try to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard of streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold And I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there for people like you
you know that we are viewing the body only for half an hour, please.
from the late mix dogs. Yeah. All right. 
we're gonna sing over the song again. You were asked to why they closed the caskets. This one was from the late Mick Stokes, Cold and Rainy Day. So we're gonna do it one more time. I just want to say good afternoon to everyone. Mr. Prime Minister, other invited guests, family. I know Miss Stokes very well. He came to my little studio where he will bring different Calypsonians to me. One thing I recognize about Mick Stokes. As long as I tell him you're about to make a start with something and you ask for your help, he always made himself available. I remember during the time he was in the hospital, Mick Stokes called me. He said, you have any keyboard to sell? Somebody up the hospital here need a keyboard. I said, man, Mick, you're in the hospital. You're not doing so well. Why are you worrying about keyboard and music and all these sort of things? But then I understand who Mick was. Mick is a guy who generally cares. In spite of what the art may be, he always cares. I just want to do this song very short. In C. It's a song that I remember my great-grandmother used to sing when she carried me at the altar as a young boy. He said, In the dark, of the midnight have I often hid my face while the storm holds above me and there's no hiding place may 
Heard the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe, till the storm passes by.
in loving memory of my dear, great, late grandfather. Michael McStokes Heiliger grew up in Roxborough Street, Newtown, in the late 50s. He lived with his aunt, Elaine, and her sister, Mrs. Harris, who loved and adored him after his mother left and moved to Curacao and never returned when he was just a little boy. Mick's favorite pastime with his friends was to use an inflatable tractor tube as a raft and paddle out to the anchored tourist ships. The cruise ship's passengers on the ships would throw coins overboard and Mick, Granddaddy, and his friends would dive them up to prove their swimming skills. He always felt like he was the best and he never showed fear in anything that he did. Another pastime Granddaddy Mikey used to love was digging up scuttle or clams down by the bay, by the bay shore and fishing off the shoreline by the Newton public bath. Granddaddy loved it in the summertime because that was when he could go bird hunting. He and his friends would use melted lead from old car batteries in a biscuit pan on a three stone fire and make scatter shots for their catapults. Armed with their catapults and scatter shots, they would go up Pond's pasture and hunt ground, ground doves and mountain doves without the consent of their parents. And when they got home, lots of licks would be shared. But they didn't care, especially Mikey, because one of his favorite lines were licks must cool. Mick was a drummer before he reached age 11. He used plastic pot pans, whatever or whatever he could find to master his drumming skills. Granddaddy used a bison box with two stopper collars and beat them. Mick also used to take tins, knock them flat, put them on a piece of stick and use them for his crashes on his drum set. Before Mick got into singing professionally, he was a limbo dancer. He used to dance with Tunka Abdurama. He used to perform at the Apollo Cinema, which was down by the old movies, right by, as we know it, the ready fried chicken on, Bay, on the Bay Road. St. Kitts, yes, had an Apollo, and there were shows at the Apollo Cinema every Sunday where he showed his talent and skills. When performing at the Apollo, if you don't sound good, you get booed off, wet down, nuts and tomatoes thrown at you, so you had to perform and perform well. Granddaddy used to do an amazing show at limbo dancing and bottle eating. Once, Granddaddy and his friends built a chemistry lab by excavating a house underneath their parents' house without permission. The house being so low to the ground, Mick and his friend Bobby, being the smallest, had to start digging first. Every afternoon after school, that was their project. By the time the father of the home found out what they were doing, they had an entire basement, 15 by 15, dug out. Fortunately for them, he didn't get mad, but instead, he assisted by hiring workers to finish the room's construction. Their first task after building their lab was to make hydrogen gas so that they could launch balloons and let them fly away with messages to the aliens. The experiment was a success, but their school uniforms were no more. They ended up with a lot of holes in their pants because of the excitement where they were sit by the beach and all the chloride, the chlor the chloride will enter their pants. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Good. Okay. 
Mikey was tiny and had an incredible, powerful voice. He was a very rhythmic, rhythmic and creative drummer. His first single was Jumpin' Jack.
Mikey was tiny and had an incredible, powerful voice. He was very rhythmic and cre a creative drummer. His first single was Jumpin' Jack, which he sang at a very young age. When Mikey was around 13 years old, there was a function in the park, and he was one of those singers. Our grandfather was invited to this special event and was sitting near the late Honorable Robert L. Bradshaw and his wife, Mildred. Mikey started singing, Darling, I Love You. Somehow, Mikey found his way from the stage to Mrs. Bradshaw and kept singing, Darling, I Love You, to her and touching her hand. Our grandfather motioned to him several times, trying to tell him that he was breaking protocol, but he, he ignored our grandfather because Mick was a real ladies' man from small. Mr. Bratcher kept telling our grandfather that it was okay and he was just performing. In the meantime, Mrs. Bratcher was having a whale of a time laughing and enjoying the moment. From that day on, Mrs. Bratcher always spoke about Mick's performance. On another occasion, young Mikey went to Stacia with the Val Morris Band. Apparently, the people of Stacia heard a lot about this youngster and they were dying to see and hear him. Mr. Morris asked our grandfather for permission to take Mikey to Stacia. He was allowed to go if they followed our grandfather's rules. First, he had to stay with our grandfather's best friend, a politician named Mr. Sadler. He was, the, he was also the father-in-law of our Uncle Billy, the late Dr. William V. Herbert. Second, he had to be home by 10 p.m. and in bed by 10.30 p.m. On the night of the show, people came in, in droves to see this tiny singer. Val Morris saw it was getting late, so he hurried Mikey onto the stage. And Mikey went to town singing and dancing. The audience was amazed by his talent, and they couldn't get enough of him. 10 o'clock came, and he was still on stage. The folks had to haul Mikey off of the stage and out of the venue. They tried their utmost best to make it to Mr. Sadler's home before 10.30, although it was supposed to be 10 p.m. Getting him home that night was a chore because our grandfather did not play. I remember while living in College Street, Mikey took singing lessons from my mother, the late Irma Atherton Nee Heiliger. Our mother used to have Mikey singing in our living room, and she would call us, Marguerite, Leslie, Bridget, Michelle, get in here. We would have to line up and listen to Mikey sing, and our mother would have us clap after each performance as we were his audience. One song I could remember clearly, and it was The Mashed Potato, to which Mikey danced his butt off to. Growing up as a youth, Mikey was in a band called Meritone's Combo, which consisted of Ellie Matt, Bing, and June Charles. The band used to be seen on the side of the street with guitars. Everyone had a guitar except Mikey. Mikey was not about to be left out. So one night, he went into one of the shops, got a Bryson box and two cola stoppers, and started playing to keep the beat. All in all, he was more or less the beat player. Another time, Mikey was on a Caribbean tour with a gentleman named Rex Harrison. Mr. Harrison was a bicycle stuntman, and he used to travel. Stop your medals! Stop, Stop your medals! Stop, Stop your medals! Stop your. <laughs> and he used to travel all over the Caribbean. After traveling and touring the Caribbean for two years, Elimat and the GIs Brass were performing at the Apollo Cinema and Mikey went down there that Saturday afternoon. He was very eager to be on that show for some reason, so he went and begged them to put him on the show. They eventually gave, and put him, gave in and put him on the show, and Mikey sang the song which Ellie, Matt, and the GI's brass used to finish their dances. After Mikey returned from St. Martin, he joined Ellie, Matt, and the GI's brass as a drummer and vocalist around 1974 and was there for a very long time. Mikey was known as the best drummer in the Eastern Caribbean. He played drums and backed up many Caribbean luminaries like Arrow, Nasio Fontaine, Sparrow, and Gregory Isaacs, 
and numerous, numerous reggae acts. When, he, when it came to music, Mikey believed in a storyline. He would not sing a song if it didn't have a storyline. Most of his songs had a storyline like She's Not There, Music in Jail, Cold and Rainy Day, La Amiga, and One Shot Man, to mention a few. Mikey was able to capture the road march with the song One Shot Man, and to be honest, he didn't even know the song was going to be a big hit that year. He sang that song out of fun, and the title was a mistake. The song was supposed to be called One Short Man, but the album printing had it as One Shot Man. They should have put the R. You see, Mikey had a good friend who used to wear khaki clothes on Fort Street all the time, and every day he would stand on the corner and call out to every sexy woman passing by. He was very short, but when they did the album, instead of putting the name One Short Man, they put One Shot Man. So Mikey just left it as One Shot Man because it made it a bit catchy. So he changed it altogether and started to sing One Shot Man. Mikey also, Mikey was also one of, one of the artists who broke the band barrier by winning the road march with the song All Kind of Things. One time, Mikey went to a show with Mr. Louis Farrakhan and the Mighty Sparrow. While sitting in the crowd watching the show, they realized something was wrong. Sparrow did not have a drummer, and they needed a drummer, so guess what? Sparrow pointed at Mikey and said, come. And mind you, Mikey never played Sparrow's music in his life, but he played his music like a pro drummer as if his life depended on it. And he and everyone in St. Kitts was so proud of the way Mikey handled himself behind those drums. Mikey traveled to many places, such as France, Germany, Belgium, Denmark, and all, almost all of the Caribbean islands, and quite a few times to New York and Canada, to name a few, performing with bands. Mick Stokes Heiliger has been playing music since 1969. At that time, there were no electric drum or instruments in St. Kitts. He learned music in the Fulton Bakery area from the Bertie's brothers using the box guitar. Mikey built his drums out of plastic and pans. Mikey blossomed into a great musician, drummer, singer, songwriter, hit maker, jeweler, and father. Mikey and his brothers were taught jewelry by our late grandfather, Albert Clifford Heiliger who groomed them and taught him and his brothers everything he knew. To Mikey's wife, Pam, my niece, goddaughter, Michelle, my namesake, the PM, German, Omar, Michael, Chriselle, please know you all are not alone. Your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, we all got you. And remember our family motto, a great heart fears nothing. Sleep well, Mikey, you have done your work, but note, they got tired to see your face. They can't get you out of the race because your children are here and the mission continues. One, two, three, four. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home of God's celestial shores. Yeah. 
a tune. Right? I used to be a drummer, you know that, right? No, just you know that used to be used to be a drummer. <laughs> Uncle Mickey was such a genuine, fun-loving man that never complained. Neither has he ever shown any sign of hurt or pain. He was always happy, showing nothing but love, and willing to give his last. There was a time a gunman came out of the shadows to rob Uncle Mickey after a late night of work. When the gunman came out of the shadows, he said, Boy, make that's you? Okay, you could pass. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Don't ask us who the gunman was or is. We don't know. And neither did Mick. Because Mick found his tail part out of that situation quick and fast. Straight home. Uncle Mickey was a ladies' man. But no matter how much of a ladies' man he was, Mick would not leave Pam. Pam don't hide your face, you're not true. And Pam would not leave she Mick for nothing. One time Pam had a bad feeling and she went to Mick's house where he lived on each street. Pam knocked on the door and Mick asked, well, who that? <laughs> he heard the voice and he still asked out of shock. Well, as Mick heard Pam's voice, Mick jumped through the window, leaving the lady friend who was in the house to fend for herself. There was another time Pam could not take it anymore, and she just had given birth to the baby girl, Michelle. 
Aww. And went over by me. Lo and behold, a lady was there lying in the bed. Mick was in the shower, getting ready to come out. We don't know for what. We weren't there. But Pam had had enough, and Pam said, no, man. He hit her again, Pam, because she's telling all your news. <laughs> in that moment, Pam took up the bed and dragged it back to her house. From East Street to John Street. See, Michelle know the story. Because Pam decided nobody's sleeping on that bed tonight. So she gone with the bed. Mick knocked all night for Pam to open the door, but Pam would not open the door. Pam went to sleep and she slept good too. Women left, right, and center used to claim Mick. Once a woman called Pam on the phone and told her that Mick was her boyfriend. Pam responded by saying, oh, you could deal with him, you know. But if he stays with you, I'll give you a trophy. Apparently, the lady never got the trophy. Because Pam and Mick never left each other. There was a year we had a bad, bad hurricane, and Mick and his daughter Michelle and his wife Pamela lived uh, in an old board one-room house. They used to have to take turns putting pots and pans and buckets to stop the water from coming into the house as it was leaking and leaking all over. That night, it was Mick's turn to put the pots and pans out for the hurricane, but Mick slept through the whole hurricane as if he said, let God do his work. I am going to sleep. Not once did Mick budge through the whole hurricane. He woke up the next day asking if the hurricane ain't coming again. Pam cussed all day, all night, but Mick just went back to sleep. Uncle Mickey was such a fun person, full of life. He would take the least thing and make it fun. He was always singing and dancing. Mick was very protective of his family. There was one time Mick sent a young boy named Flushit up to Pappy shop to buy something. When Flushit got to Pappy, a guy there wrote a love letter and gave it to Flushit to give to Michelle when she was just 15, of course. Flushit didn't quite understand the assignment and he took the love letter and gave it to Mick. Mick read the letter and when he saw what was in the letter, Mick decided, no time at all. Mick took his baseball bat and went up to Papi shop. And Mick went by that shop every day for a week. Well, you know who ain't went back by Papi shop. And I don't think we ever heard from that guy again, ain't it, Michelle? No time at all. Mick was happy to be blessed with his children and grandchildren, whom he loved all very much. Mick had six boys and one girl, and he always bragged about his biggest achievement in life. That was what his children gave to him. From fighting in the army, singing, big DJ and entertainer, you know who that one be? And of course, being prime minister. He always said that none of his accomplishments were better than what his children gave to him, and he always used to get teary about this. In his latter years, when he got his granddaughter, Krishel, it was like making him a father all over again. Mick once said that when he was younger and had his children, he didn't get the chance to spend as much time with them as he wanted to as he was in and out of the country and always on the go. And each chance he got, he was teaching his children his trade to do jewelry, singing, and even playing cricket. And yes, the Prime Minister could play cricket and join chain good. The PM, I want to chain, you know. As a matter of fact, one me ring mash up. So I'm going to call you Monday, right? Okay, good. Krishel became his favorite pastime hobby. Afternoon walks to the park, on the swing, pillow fighting, hide and seek. And he used to be at her every beck and call. When she did wrong and your mommy was coming, she ran to grandpa 
as he would always get her out of trouble. There was one night Pam went to bed and Pichelle told Uncle Mickey she wanted to boil an egg. Mick never told that child no. He put on the boiled egg and they went to play, leaving the boiled egg on the stove. And guess what happened? The pot, the water, the egg, and everything else burned up. Mick tried to hide the pot, but he didn't hide it well enough because Pam found the pot next morning. Pam made him scrub the pot till it was shined by the pipe outside while Quishel and Mella laughed at him. Mick had a technique. He would run up the guest, best, the guest bedroom and hide and sleep when housework started. But as soon as Quishel came and said, Grandpa, he jumped up one time and do whatever she wanted. Mick love his mouth. When it comes to food, that is Mickey. Uncle Mick used to say, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And oh gosh, he loved Pam cooking the most. Even when he went out to do his thing, play at party and lime in, tell yourself he coming home to Pam's house for his food. When Pam cooked six chicken, tell yourself four out of the six for Mick, and the other two for Pam and Michelle to share. And if Michelle ain't eat, back in the pot, Mick goes. Mick used to brag to all his friends about Pam cooking and invited them up every Sunday. And when they came, nobody wanted to leave. And that was every Sunday. They kept coming back. Mick loved his mouth so much that sometimes his family used to ask him where his food going because he was a smally man. And Mick used to say, his brain big. Mick enjoyed singing and dancing at home with his family. Sometimes in their own times, they used to build karaoke spot in their rooms just so that they could sing and dance together, which he enjoyed very much because singing was his life. Mick also loved sitting at the table eating with his family, especially when his son came over on Sundays, which used to be one of his favorites, just to sit and chat about the way things could change. Mick adored his children as he saw a bit of him in every one of them, and he was always encouraging them to be proud and strong, as he was also proud of them. You see, Mick was a lot of things, but most of all, he was a great dad, a grandpa, a father, husband, and most of all, a friend. Sleep in peace, legend. Your legacy will never die. Thank you. I wonder how much things daddy could. What? Daddy, are you weaving, you know? Appetizer. <laughs> so that's the appetizer. Alright, <laughs> watch her. You want a grandfather now? <laughs> hey, you want a grandpa? Oh come, let's go. Come. <laughs> come. Crystal. Crystal, time to come, go be it. Come. Come, baby. Come. Come for your bottle. Come with 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 your bottle. Walk out my girl, walk out. Walk out my girl, walk out. Walk out my girl, walk out. Okay, boy. Yeah, yeah. Go back like that, go back like that. You got dog, all right? Good, good daddy, dear. You know. Me good. <laughs> Me. <laughs> hey, you got a lot of style. Me good, good. I come over and work. Just let down and look what my daddy do. You see, my daddy does treat me the way a man's supposed to treat me. He shows me a lot of love. Watch, watch this one here. Watch this one here. Is that Michelle? Yeah. Who just passed there? Your daughter. Is your daughter? Yes, it is. <laughs> Ta-da.
Watch him. Like him out. Watch him. How much? How many bars you play? It? Seven days a week. <laughs> Seven here to be eaten. <laughs> so every meat farm represent. A day. Sharp your metal, sharp your metal, daddy, sharp your metal, sharp your metal, sharp the metal. Okay, I'm a 609. Go ahead. Climb, 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 baby girl. Climb, climb. What's your people in my house? Eh, what's your people in my house? Daddy, what are you eating? What's your? All kind of things. <laughs> I watch your teeth there. Watch your teeth coming in my mouth. You granddaughter. You granddaughter. Me granddaughter. Me granddaughter. On the swing. Dunk stairs. But when she got on the swing, and the swing got so and so. She didn't sit down. It just move. And she was on swing, but she want me sit down on the swing. Grandpa, come. Me not study she. Me and the iPad playing game. She just jump out the swing, grab the iPad, take it for me, yeah. sit down on the ground, and grab me and I say, come, no. Push me in here. So much like your mother. <laughs> you sing it, daddy. Turn up the mic. Hey, hey. Make me party, Chrissy. Make me party, no man. When I say I'm fed up with heart, eh, eh, eh. I'm just doing joke I'm making. Chrissy! I'm just doing joke I'm making. Remember you just said me, you got to do the dance. That's the grab boy, just say the dance. You said this is me only lover, eh, eh, me only friend. Eh, eh, what if that's all I call you? <laughs> what I do with that again, God? Tell me what I do. What I do again? People calling me name, love. I watch him. Mommy guy is coming in fat. What you do? I'm on the face today. 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 Take that there, man. Take that. Happy birthday, 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 happy That's the benefit of technology. It makes the grieving process easier. Good afternoon. Shall we stand, please? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. Therefore, if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. 
So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this reason has Christ became both Lord of the dead and of the living. Let us continue in this Thanksgiving service as we sing the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me And all my days have been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God
We are gathered in the presence of God to remember and give thanks for the life of Michael Mixtokes and to affirm God's love for us and to support one another in a time of need. Let us acknowledge our grief and be open in our love, affirming the meaning and the mystery of life, confident in the hope of a resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the support of the weary, who does not willingly grieve your children, look down in tender love and pity we pray on these your servants, whose joy is turned into mourning. According to the multitude of your mercies, uphold, strengthen, and comfort them that they may not faint on the distrial, but find strength and refuge in you. Almighty God, direct us through your word, so that hearing your promises, we may be lifted out of darkness and distress into the light and peace of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue as we sing Bless the Lord, O my soul, 10,000 reasons. And after this, the program will run unannounced. We'll be followed by the first scripture reading and then the tributes as listed in the program. Bless the Lord, O my soul, 10,000 reasons.
Scripture reading today is taken from Ephesians 4, verses 29 to 32. It reads, Do not let unwholesome, which is foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words, come, ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others, according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him, by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, which is the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse, and malevolence. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender hearted, which is compassionate understanding forgiving one another readily and freely just as God in Christ also forgave you this is the word of the Lord
General, Honorable Marcella Leibard, Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew, as well as his family, the family of Mr. McStokes, Honorable Members of Cabinet, dignitaries, friends, and well-wishers of Mr. McStokes, who's being laid to rest today. We at the Ministry of Health, we would like to offer our support to our Minister of Health, Dr. Terence Drew, at this time. We are hoping that, as it has been shown for the afternoon, that this is not a time of grief, but instead it's a time of celebration. And we also want to let him know that at this time, if he needs support, that all of us at the ministry, we have his back. And for him to always remember to be still his heart and that God is in control.
Grace be to you and peace be multiplied from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We heard about Mick as the singer, but Mick was also a radio announcer. In 1972, Mick worked at ZBVI radio station in Woodtown, Tortola. At first, he was the commercial producer, and then he became the morning show host with Mike in the morning from 5 to 10. His tenure eventually ended at ZBVI as he headed to Canada, touring with his band there. There he entered a radio training program. The manager said they loved his voice, but he didn't have a Canadian accent. And Mick said since he wasn't planning on changing his accent, it didn't work out. Years after that, Mick found himself in the radio industry again, when he was recruited by Vince Herbert to work at a new station that was opened in around 1996. It was located in the Rams building across from the Craft House. The station was called Choice FM. However, the station did not last long and faded out late 1996. After that failure, Mikey and a couple of other colleagues, including the late Val Thomas and Tony Hendrickson, who lives in the US, established their own radio station that became known as Sugar City Rock. He did not remain there too long, and this time, the break from radio lasted for many years. In 2008, I asked Mick to join me in co-hosting a radio program called Radio Market, and he eagerly accepted. The program was held on Thursdays in the mornings from 11 to 12 noon, then moved to Saturdays from 10 to 11. We were on radio only in the beginning, then TV, and now social media. But Mick was the same all over, dancing into the studio with all kinds of moves. I used to say, Michael, because I used to call him Michael. Michael, you okay? And he would laugh and say, JD, so he never called me Jazzy, he never called me Jasmine, JD. I woke up this morning, the sun is shining. And we got some rain. He always had a compliment. And I would respond. Because he always telling me, oh, you look so beautiful to dance. So I'll say, you look quite nice yourself. Pam, fix you up good this morning, boy. We had a wonderful rapper. Soon after, he was invited to host the long time running radio program, National Showcase, which Conce Edwards and Theo Clark used to host. Mick enjoyed the program because, like me, he loved local music and he played drums on a lot of the music that was aired. On Saturday, the 20th of June, was the last time Mick and I hosted Radio Market together. I looked at him and I saw that he wasn't well. The fact that he sat down said a whole lot because Mick never used to sit down. Mick would be up dancing about. He used to lift the mic up and he stood up. The chairs, he moved back the chairs. He never used to sit. And so I said, Mick, you don't look... I said, what's wrong? You don't look right. I mean, he had spoken to me before and then he told me again what happened. And I said, Mick, we're going doctor today. I said, what is Pam saying about this? He said, Pam abusing me all the time, telling me go doctor, Jazzy. He cussed, she cussed me straight. And Michelle too. I said, well, I am joining Pam today, and we're going doctor, and I'm not moving till we go. And so we went by his home, and then I called, we tried to call Pam, but we couldn't get her. And we got Michelle, and I told Michelle, Michelle, Dr. Laws is closed. I'm not leaving here until we see a doctor, so please find somebody to book an appointment. And she called Dr. Richardson, she, he said, come now. And I said, Mick, let's go. And we went and I sat in the, in the office with him, outside in the lobby, and I waited until he was finished. 
and that bothers me because of the things I say. Maybe if you never go, you'd be better. You know, be here. You know. But I know that he's with God, so I am happy today. But I'm sad because I miss my friend. He was my friend, and I had the utmost respect for Pam. When I called you home. I speak to Pam before I could speak to Mick. I make sure she know, Pam, this is Jazzy, a call in for Mick. And we talk. And he used, she used to do some Pam cakes. We call them Pam cakes because they taste so good, right? Some fritters. And every time she bake her Pam, she, she, she fry her, her Pam cakes, bet she life Mick bringing some for me. So Pam, please, I need a batch. Just in case. On behalf of the Chairman of the Board of Directors, Javon Leibard, the Board of Directors, Management and Staff of ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, I extend the condolences to his wife, Pamela, his children, Michelle, Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew, Michael, Jermel, and Omar, his adopted children, grandchildren, sisters, brothers, relatives, and friends. I also extend the condolences from the maestro, Elston Nero, who wrote, the late great Mick Stokes Heiligo was to me the best drummer, vocalist, and limbo king that I, Elimat, ever knew. Simply put, the best. We grew up on Roxborough Street, not too far from each other. We became lifetime friends and music lovers. We played music and read comic books. He was the in energizer in any music band, always ready, always smooth. Our personal greeting was, and I can try to say it, boop boop ti boop boop. His talent will be sorely missed and will leave a hole in our music culture. No words can justly describe the best in class, one of a kind composer, drummer, vocalist, and blessed entertainer. He has returned to be with his maker, gone but will never be forgotten. Boop boop ti boop boop. Rest in eternal peace. Elston Matthew. I also extend the condolences from Joyce Lynn Daniel, who used to give in to Radio Market food baskets, etc. The Totally for Kids cast. Because when he come for Radio Market, he would sit in the studio and he would listen to the children. And he always commended them. And sometimes they used to go and pick him up and bring him up when he didn't have any trans. And George Somersault. Grandmaster George Somersell, they called each other Bingy. You know, Mick had a nickname for everybody, you know. Another name. He used to call Buyok. Well, Dennis Delaney Richards, Buyok. He called Wongo, Ignition. And he had to say it in a certain way. Whoa. I also bring condolences, extend condolences from my sons. Alson, Jarrett, and Michael, who used to call him Uncle Mick. Mick wrote some beautiful songs. He did an album that I loved the most by Ronnie, Ronnie Rascal, my co-worker. His recording studio, I don't know if he has it now, but it was called Asylum Sound Factory. He was the engineer, and that album had on songs like Where Is The Love? I love his lyrical content. I mean, some of it say, we say we are a family and share the same ancestry. But there is something missing. This family don't live loving. We were sent here on a mission. Now we all become like Satan. Tell me, where is the love? Beautiful songs. I know that you all only know maybe One Shot Man and Music in Jail and Cold and Rainy Day, but these, that's magnificent. And... My sister, we share that song. Because, and he has a line in it that says, All I say is, God forbid, look at where Dr. Claxton live. That's magnificent. Our volleyball girls is the best in the OECS, yes. I mean, it's just how he used to face his lyrics and everything that I enjoyed backing him up and singing with him. However, today, I'm going to sing a cover that Ellie Matt and the G.I.S. Brass did, that he did with Ellie Matt and the G.I.S. Brass, entitled Try a Little Kindness. In the horn section, you have Kenrick Hicks, Darwood Madada Byron, 
Lionel Wussy Rollins and Wingrove Hicks. I'm gonna do the original, the dear version. The singer and the drummer. If you see your brother standing by the road with a heavy load from the seeds he sowed, and if you see your sister falling by the way, just stop and say, You're going the wrong way. You've got to try a little kindness, show a little kindness, shine your light so everyone can see. And when you try a little kindness, then you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded street. So don't walk around the down and out. Lend a helping hand instead of doubt. And the kindness that you show every day will help someone. Along the way, you've got to try a little kindness, show a little kindness, shine your light for everyone to see. And if you try a little kindness, you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow minded people on the narrow minded street. Of the narrow minded people on the narrow minded street. You've got to try a little kindness, show a little kindness, shine your light for everyone to see. And if you try a little kindness, you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow minded people on the narrow minded street. So today, honestly, I did not want to do a viewing with my dad. The reason for that is I wanted everybody to remember him for who he really was. That happy, funny man. And you know, my dad had a laugh that was so unique in his own style and funny ways. My dad was our cheerleader. What I often used to hear him say with it to his friends, which Jazzy mentioned was boog up the boog up. I always try to figure out what does that mean? Hopefully Wussy will tell me one day. <laughs> he was my friend and always happy to brag about us, his children. His children made him happy. We made him proud. We were not perfect, especially me. Sometimes he used to come home as afternoon time when I come from mom's school, he used to say, Pam, who Michelle fight with today? Cause yeah, that was yeah, I was a little tomboy at those times. Um, I feel 
my daddy was so proud of us as, as his children. I remember one time we went to Terence swearing in session. I whispered to him, Daddy, please don't cry. Don't embarrass me. Five minutes ain't passed, and here comes I'm so proud, happy tears. I said, no, man, Daddy, you can't be doing this to me. I tell my son, stop coming with you, you know? Right? Anyway, I laughed because I knew it was coming, but I'm glad he lived long enough to witness it for himself, to see his son become the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> my dad was sick for a while, but we didn't know. And he never believed in doctors. He kept his pain to himself a lot. I was, my dad, I was by my dad's side when we found out that he was sick. And instead of crying and breaking down, the man started to dance to the jeep. We even sang the song, She's Not There. It was like he had already accepted within himself that what was to be, would be. But he was in so much pain, I could tell. The night my dad passed away was a sad night for our family. I held his hand and sang the, song, sang the song we always sing together. The same song he promised me that we would remake one day, but it's too late now. Me and my dad's favorite song was She's Not There. When I reached the song's chorus, my dad watched me, shed a tear, then took his last breath. I watched my daughter, then I watched my mom. I didn't even know what to say. Who's going to be Krishal's pamper now? as she calls him. He was our everything, and I died inside because the pain was too much. I then called my brother Terrence, and I said, Terrence, daddy's gone. He's gone. And then I just cried and hung up the phone because I didn't even want to hear Terrence cry. Today I want to tribute this song to my dad because he might be gone from us in body, but his spirit and legacy will remain in our hearts forever.
just kept you out In the side of the room I just broke down Cause he took her for a drive And over the cliff the car capsized And she was laid to rest right where she died Operator, please give me that overseas number I want to send my sympathy to her lover in his eyes, he said, she called your name before she died, oh Lord, it's not fair, he said, I'm aware that she's not there, she's not there, she's not there, she's not there. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I just, I just happen to be one of the play members of the GI Brass International, where I met Stokes. We had a little, you know, back and back, nothing personal, just breaking rights when it comes to drums. He's the best drummer I ever come around some stuff that never lead me one of the things is to keep that bass drum stiff and everything else drop easy so here I am this afternoon to give you this song by Ben Jacks I know everybody know this song so join in and sing Let's make this thing a joyful thing, send him off in a good way. Come on, you look 
everybody. Put your hands together. Let me do this. This next song is One Shot Man by the late great Mixed Up. Oh, we're gonna do music in jail first and then come down. Check one, check one. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. This is our contribution to. Uncle Mickey Stokes and family. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, <laughs> 
Fix that, fix that. Hey, you want me to tell you something straight? You want me to tell you something nice? You're hearing all kind of things about Mickey now, all kind of things. All kind of things about Michael now, all kind of things. They're saying all kind of things about Mickey now, all kind of things. All kind of things about Michael now, all kind of things. Hey! And it's the truth. 
I want my flowers now. Give me my flowers now. Don't wait till I die. And they don't tell me all the nice things. I can't hear it. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. It's true. I have to wait a while. I know my good friends will sort me out, man. No worries. Let's go! Passport cars. Just a little technical difficulty, you know, in all things. Everything don't run smooth. Just like life. We think life running smooth, but it ain't so. One moment. Alright. See that if they can't get it fixed, so we're gonna let the program continue. Yes. The program. Good afternoon to all. Let me recognize the Governor General, Dame Marcella Leibold, and also allow me the opportunity to also acknowledge the members of the Federal Cabinet who are here with us today. I also want to recognize members of the Diplomatic Corps from the Republic of China, Taiwan, Republic of Cuba, and Venezuela. Also want to recognize the former Deputy Governor General and all other officials, PSAs of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. Let me also recognize our Cabinet Secretary who is here with us. I want to acknowledge all of my siblings who are here also want to acknowledge all of my aunts, my nieces, my uncles, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews, my family in general, and to also recognize those of the extended family and those who have come to extend their best wishes to us here this afternoon. I want to say also to the Newtown community, the community where my dad came from, and he always spoke highly of this community. I want to acknowledge you as well. I want to acknowledge the band because you could not have a celebration of life without a band when you're talking about Mickey Stokes. It is what he is best known for. But this afternoon, I want to just use a few minutes to probably highlight other aspects of him that may not be known. And I will do so from, of course, my personal interaction with him. I lived with him in the very early stages of my life in Newtown. That I can remember. But I remember him always having to travel and always having to go because that is what his chosen profession called for. He traveled to many countries throughout the Caribbean 
North America and Europe playing music. And from those days, he will give stories, very, very interesting stories. But what I want to talk about today is how he would have, he would have impacted me in unsuspecting ways. Somebody said this afternoon that his music always had a story. Because one of the things that he complained about with what we call the modern music is that he said lyrically the music was poor and he thought that there was too much rhythm box and not enough, enough drums or horns. You would expect him to say something like that. Nonetheless, there were a few artists that he really took pride in listening when he listened to local music because he thought they paid attention to music and they paid attention to lyrics as well. But the other side of Mick Stokes that you may not know is that he was a deep lover of cricket. And when I went back to live with my family down here with the Highland girls in town at about 14 years of age or 13 to 14 years of age, one of the things that we enjoyed was playing cricket at afternoons at the back of the shop. He would take his time, make sure that the balls were ready and the bats were ready. And when school was over and I got home, he was basically ready for cricket. So he, myself, my Uncle Marlon, and others used to come around. We used to play cricket together. And I played cricket with him, and he said, look, I have the wicked, wicked, the most wicked spin ball in St. Kitts because I'm a new town man. And we battled behind here. And as he danced, just how we bowls, a lot of style and wriggle up and all sorts of things, as you will say it in local palance. But interestingly enough, from that time, interacting with him, he really enjoyed it. I remembered that for a few sessions I missed. And Marlon said to me, I think you need to make sure you are there for cricket every day because if you don't realize it, your father enjoy cricket with you all more than anything else. And that was our tradition. But to speak further to it, we used to watch cricket at nights, Australia versus West Indies. Old Mr. Heiliger, my grandfather, as he was known, Austin Eddy. And we used to stay up at nights watching cricket all night, and I had to go to school in the day. It's the only thing I could have stayed up late for, cricket. And interestingly enough, when I applied to specialize in the United States, and I went for my interview, the professor was a professor called Richard McCullen from Australia. And when he recognized I was from St. Kitts, instead of talking medicine, we started to talk cricket. And we spoke cricket for 45 minutes of the hour that I had with him. And each sentence that I said as I spoke about cricket and spoke about Australia because he was from Melbourne, Australia, I remembered my father, my grandfather, and Austin Eddy, and those who I play cricket with. For there is no doubt in my mind that the reason why, the number one reason why I got the spot to be able to be specialized, to specialize in the States was because I knew the history of cricket. And that is my connection with that. The other thing about him is that he was a philosopher. His lyrics did not come out of the sky. He always felt that his music had to have a story and be based on something about the human condition. When I was about 15, he took me to the back of the shop where there was a shed, and he showed me a box. The box was an old cartoon box filled with old books. And he said, those are the books that your great-grandmother used to read as well. I spent, the, I spent the whole summer reading those books. The one book that I can remember is a book from 1924, the first time that I learned about the origin of species. After that summer, he realized that I was different. I read religion. I read philosophy. I read concepts of life. I read about how a man should live. And then he and I entered into some further discussion about life. One was about religion and why he was not religious. He said, I'm spiritual. 
but I don't subscribe to any specific religion, but I believe in God. I asked him further, what do you think about life and the end of life? And he said to me that he would never, ever go to a doctor. He felt that he must live until he died. And that is why Jazidi said he refused to go to a doctor. It was part of his philosophy of life. I asked him why he said his grandfather did not go to any doctor and he almost lived to 100. So he always felt if you go to a doctor, you might live shorter. But anyway, I accepted it. And he knew that I accepted it even though I myself am a doctor. I would notice things and he would say, don't worry about that. I'm not going to any doctor. And so he lived his life. And so when he got sick, and I looked him deep in his eyes, and he looked me back deep in my eyes, and he understood the message I was conveying. The message I was conveying is that you told me that you will never visit a doctor. But the message he sent me back is that that was my philosophy of life, and I will live it all the way through. Even then, he taught lessons about commitment to one philosophies of life. He was very loving in his way. He expressed it by action and not by words. I remembered after the 2015 elections, when I lost the elections, and he, know, or he knew that it would have been devastating to some extent. He came to visit me almost every Sunday in St. Peter's. And if he didn't meet me, he did something to know, to let me know that he was there. And he would say to me, this is just an obstacle in life. You'll get over that as well. So in the darkest hour, he showed up. And he showed up to give his full support to his son, who he knew needed it at that particular time. But he just didn't let it stay there. I remember one time I was on the platform and I spoke. And he came just to listen, to hear how I spoke. After that, he took his notes and he called me and he said, I want to share a few things with you. He said, public speaking is very similar to singing. It has to have some aspects of entertainment. But he also said the way you express your voice is also very important. It determines whether the audience listens to you or the audience does not listen to you. And so he started to teach me voice management and breathing during speeches, the exact things that he applied during singing. And then after that, I recognized that my public speaking got better. He wasn't so much concerned about the content. He thought that the content would be good. He was concerned about the way that I do it. And he expressed to me that if you were to do these things, you will quickly recognize that there will be a shift in how the audience responds to you. And I can say today that much of, much of the techniques that he have taught me, they have, of course, panned out to be exactly as he envisaged. And so I want to thank him for that as well. I want to say about him that even though you know him for his music, he, has, he had another th other side. He was a jeweler. And every Saturday he wanted us to come to jewelry with him. Not that he thought that we were good jewelers, but it's what's his way of bonding with us. And I told him from day one, I'm really not interested too much in jewelry or wearing jewelry. But nonetheless, he would have me in the shop. He would have Omar in the shop. He would have us there working hard, milling gold, joining chains, rings, earrings, all that things, all those things he taught us. Because he said to me once, if nothing else in life pans out, a person must have a trade because that is what you might have to fall back on. Those are the lessons that I have learned from him. And to when I saw him at the end, as he was giving up life, knowing that he had life in abundance and more life than most persons, very active, very captivating, very giving. I used to say to him from time to time, why do you give so much? And he used to say to me all the time, well, when you're dead, where are you going back with? That is what he used to say to me. People would pass by all day, and he would not say no to people. Enough money would have passed through his hand to be rich, 
I can assure you of that. But he was never interested in riches. He was interested in human connections, human relations, and to help as much as he could help. I think I got some of that from him, giving and giving. But I say today that I'm immensely proud to have spent the time that I spent with him. Even in my latter years, the latter time with him, sorry, we used to have Sunday lunch together. And he used to enjoy when I came to the house for Sunday lunch. He used to eat pork. I tell him I don't eat pork. He used to eat chicken. I tell him I don't eat chicken either. But nonetheless, he would eat what he eat. I would eat what I eat. And we would have a good time on the Sunday afternoon. And through those days of lunch, he will express to me a lot more stories and stories and stories. Learning from him that his success wasn't by accident, but that he actually had a strategy of how to attain the success that he attained. And I sought to learn as much as I could, as I could from him. So seeing him gone, seeing him not here with us today, it is bitter but in a sense, we are given the opportunity to celebrate his life. He has done well. He has left a mark. A mark in music. A mark in jewelry. A mark in entertainment. A mark with his offsprings. And I say to all today, thank you for coming out. Thank you for sharing and celebrating with us the life of our beloved father. Mixed talks, high legal. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 17. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed are thou, Simon, by Jonah, the flesh of blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Your Excellency, Dave Marcella Liburd, Governor General of the Federation. Your Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Jew. Members of the Federal Cabinet, including Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Jeffrey Hanley, and Parliamentary Representative for this area, East Basti and Mrs. Hanley. Other members of the Federal Cabinet, Honorable members of the opposition in the federal cabinet, honorable members of the Nevis Island administration, and honorable members of the Nevis Island Assembly, our cabinet secretary, or speaker of the National Assembly, members of the diplomatic corps, a deputy governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, senior officials of the public service, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to express to our prime minister my profound sympathy on the passing of his father and to other members of the family, the wife of Mick Stokes, other children, especially Michelle, and the extended family, the community, and all those who are left to, to grieve his loss. At this time, we are going to sing No Longer a Slave, and the ushers will lift an offering.
You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. You unravel me. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer. Chosen me, 
providing our needs. We pray now that as we hear your word, that in hearing your word, we will be better. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Permit me a few moments of your time as I share with you a thought from God's word. The prophet Bob Marley said, one good thing about music is when it hits you, you feel no pain. I really was enjoying the band. Me too. <laughs> and I was waiting for them to sing all kind of things. Because if you think I don't know those songs, you're wrong. I was jamming when One Shot Man became the road match. And I was waiting for them to say all kind of things. Because people does really say all kind of things about you. Anybody with me? Yes. Things you know and things you don't know. And that was one of the best things Mick could have said. That they're always talking all kind of things. That is why the first reading this afternoon from Ephesians said you must only speak wholesome things. Things that become edifying and building up, not things to break down. That's the first thing. Because I know you want to go, so I don't have to keep you long. First thing, speak good things about people. You heard me? Yeah. Good. The second thing in Matthew chapter number 16, and I'm going to give you an abridged version of what I intended to say because I don't need to speak long. Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus asks his disciples a general question. What are people saying about me? And the disciples say, Lord, they're saying all kind of things. <laughs> and the truth is, all of us say all kind of things yes. about God. Yes. Even Oscar, I remember Oscar in the days of Jericho's. 
His shirt wet down with all the gel on the back of his shirt. I know those things, you know. <laughs> I want to say that one of the things I remembered about Mick and, and the Highly Go Sharp was when I was little and selling, my God, I always put a little faith in Mr. Highly Go. I feel he used to feel sorry for me. Don't care what I was selling, I went in Mr. Highly Go Shop and he bought it. I just knew that was one man I could go to to buy something. I felt he would feel sorry for me. And yes, of course, I would see Mick there doing the jewelry and all that kind of good stuff. But Jesus, in Matthew chapter number 16, asked his disciples a general question. They said they're saying all kinds of things. And Jesus said, what do you say about me? I want to be specific. Now, what do you say? People do come to us and say they're saying all kind of things about you. Well, you need to ask the person who come and say that, what did you say? You can't stand up and hear them say all kind of things about me and you didn't say anything. So I want to know what did you say. Don't tell me what they say. Tell me what you say. And Jesus got direct with his disciples and he asked them, who do you say I am? Because you know, people who don't know you call you you. Yes. People who know you call you by your name. Yes. Because they know you. Yes. And when Jesus asked the disciples, Peter says, Lord, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus says, Blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood could not have revealed this to you. Those who know Jesus call him by name. David called him Jehovah, Rohai, the Lord's my shepherd. He knew him. Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who supplies. Samuel called him Jehovah Nisi. The Lord our banner. Yeah. Gideon called him Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. The God of my peace. Moses called him Jehovah Elohim. God our creator. Yeah. When you know God, you call him by his name. Amen. 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 And so my friends, Jesus had performed many mighty miracles. He wanted to know if the disciples really knew who he was. And the same question I ask you today. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know who he is? Because Stephen cannot call it practical atheism. That we talk about God but we live something else. We say we know him but when it comes time to live him, we do something else. Many of you are familiar with the song... Which reminds us that he's more than just a swear word. Yeah. He's more than I don't care word. How can we treat his name so recklessly? Our only hope is in this one word. Yeah. Whosoever will may come word. He's more than just a swear word. He's the precious son of God. Of God. Could somebody give me an yeah. amen? Amen. amen? Jesus spoke about himself. Yeah. And in John, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Yeah. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Yes. And God the Father spoke about Jesus. And he says, he is the radiance of the glory of God. The exact imprint, the prototype of who I am. And he upholds the universe by his words and his power. Amen. My friends, what do you say about Jesus? Beyonce says, the thing that keeps me grounded is knowing that I am always protected and that God is in control of things. Stephen Curry, the basketball player, says, Jesus is everything to me. Yes. Tom Hanks, the actor, says, I think you'd be foolish not to believe in God. <laughs> Patricia Heathen, the actor, says, 
You try to be a model of kindness and love and forgiveness to all those around you because you have received kindness and love and forgiveness from God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Kevin James in Actors says, All good comes from God, so I want to honor him. Chuck Norris, the actor and producer says, Real men do live for Jesus Christ. Amen. If they can talk about Amen. Christ, what say you Amen. about Jesus today? Amen. The reality is, Stephen Sylvester Stallone, he says, the more I go to church, the more I turn myself over to the process of believing in Jesus Amen. and listening to his word and having him guide my hand and my heart. I feel as though the pressure is off of me now because I have given it all to him. I want to say to us, my friends, and I won't be much longer, you must decide what you will say about Jesus because one day he will have something to say about you. You must decide what you will say because the time will come and he will say something about you. I always liked that little song that Paradise used to play many years ago about the young little boy whose name was Jimmy yeah. who was 10 or 11 whose parents had abandoned him yeah. for the nightlife and the fast life and he had to make his way through life by hustling as we would call it today. He was a newspaper seller and it is said that Jimmy every day would go down to the gospel mission. He would lay his papers out and he would go to the altar. And he would pray and he would say, Jesus, this is Jimmy. Yeah. Jesus, this is Jimmy. And we are told that one day Jimmy went to the Good Gospel Mission. And the preacher was inside having a counseling session. And Jimmy did not recognize that he was disturbing anyone. And he went in as his usual thing was. And he said, Jesus, this is Jimmy. Jesus, this is Jimmy. The pastor who was interrupted at the time. He went over and we are told he took little Jimmy by the hand. He ruffled him out of the church and he said, boy, can't you see that we are busy? And Jimmy did not realize that he was interrupting or doing anything. And Jimmy said to that preacher, I am sorry, preacher, for interrupting. I just want the Lord to know my name. As he left, we are told the preacher got a glimpse of the teary-eyed young boy. And once again, like his parents had done, Jimmy was pushed away in his life. We are told that as he left the gospel mission, he slipped on a curb and a big truck hit him over, and Jimmy was taken to the hospital. The doctor said that his life on earth would soon be ended. And we are told that while in that room, that a great light lit up that room, and then a voice was heard, resounding out of heaven, saying, Jimmy, this is Jesus. Jimmy, this is Jesus. Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. My friend, I want to tell you in closing that you will have to give an account that one of these days will God call your name or will he say, depart from me? I know that every single one of you listening to me today have heard the message of salvation before and I know that every single one of you listening to me you believe in God every single one of you who are listening to me you know that you will have to give an account for your life I have noticed that because death has become as it were so prevalent even more than we can begin to imagine in recent times People seem to be living more careless lives because the thought is, I may die, so let me do whatever, cast off all restraints and live the way I want. When we see death galloping towards us the way it is, it should cause us to live with more precision. It should cause us to live circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. The Lord says to us, it's appointed unto man once to die. And heaven knows our number. Every number is written down in heaven. For all that we know, some of us here today are on our last cast. For all that we know, before we leave here, 
We will hear the sad tale that someone who sat under this tent, God forbid, someone who came to this home going service, they have taken their last breath. I want to challenge you, my friends, that you must make your calling and election sure so that if you are called from time into eternity, you can hear the voice of God saying, whatever your name is, this is Jesus. Enter into the joy of my presence. You can believe the word of God for health. You can believe the word of God for wealth. You can believe the word of God for wife, for husband, for house. Well, you better believe it for heaven and hell. Amen. You must preach the whole counsel of God. Believe the whole counsel of God. The word of God says if you do not trust Christ in time, you will be, dis you will be separated from him in eternity. And I pray that God would speak to our hearts today of the necessity to serve him and trust him as Lord and Savior of our lives. The songwriter says, day follows night. Night follows day. This whole world keeps rolling along. Come on, praise team. You help me here. What will your answer be? What will you say? When Jesus beckons you home. When Jesus beckons you home. Day follows night. Day follows night. Night follows day. This whole world keeps rolling along. But what will your answer be? What will your answer be? What will you say when Jesus beckons you home? Beckons you home. My friends, if you do not live every day, every moment with the knowledge that you are going to die, you haven't started to live. If you do not live every moment with the thought that you are going to die, you haven't started to live. When you live with the thought that you are going to die, you live more carefully. You spend time with those you love. You treat others well. You respect others. Because we do not know how much time we have. Shall we stand wherever you are? In the presence of Almighty God, in this moment, Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the life that was shared with Michael Mick Stokes. We remember all the good things that were shared with him and they are now part of history. We thank you for his gifts and his skills and the way that they were used to benefit his family, his community, this federation, and the world. We know that our lives were blessed by his presence here with us. Brief though his time has been, we thank you. And we pray that we may continue to live our lives inspired by the memories of him. Mick has been significant in the lives of all of us. And so in this moment, we thank you for him. Remember those who are left to mourn his loss, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, brothers, sisters, members of the extended family. It was better to have had him than to have not have had him at all everything you do is well done yes. we thank you. Thank, you, Lord. thank you now may the god of peace who brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant make you complete in everything good 
so that you may do his will working among us which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen into your hands O merciful savior we commend your servant michael mick stokes heiliger acknowledge we pray a sheep of your own fold a lamb of your own flock a sinner of your own redeeming receive him into your arms of your eternal mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light through jesus christ our lord amen our recessional song soon and very soon we are going to see the king internment will be at springfield cemetery
below From the seeds you sow And you see your sister walking by the way I Just stop and say You're going the wrong way You've got to try a little kindness A sure little kindness Just shine your light for everyone to see And when you try a little kindness Then you'll overlook the blindness By the narrow-minded people In the narrow-minded street Just don't walk around this town and out Let the help in hand instead of doubt And the kindness that you show every day Go help someone along the way You've got to try a little kindness A show a little kindness Just shine your light for everyone to see And when you try a little kindness Then you'll overlook My mama always say, son, love is life Operator, please give me that overseas number That overseas number I wanna tell my woman that I still love her, still love her. He picked up the phone Cause she was not alone the She's not there. She's not there. She's not there. She's not there. She must be gone away. He I felt inside 
worth something I just can't hide But I know that she won't understand Each night I pray to God that she will soon come back to me Cause she were in love with the married man About the great times we had when we were together Her laughter I heard But I couldn't say a word He just didn't care Oh Lord, it's not fair He said, she's not there
I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection, eternal life. We commit the body, Michael, Nick, stock to the ground, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and leave his soul with God our Maker, ensure and certain hope of a resurrection to come. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, says the Spirit. They rest from their labors and their work they follow them. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the beginning you formed us from the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of life. So also in the last days you have promised to raise us up from the dust so we might assume a new body at the coming of your Son. So as in Adam all died, so in Christ shall all be made alive. We thank you for this hope that Michael McStokes, who has died, will be raised to life imperishable. Look down upon us with tender pity and compassion, and grant each of us the comfort of your spirit. Renew within us the joy of your salvation, to Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us, yeah. That which is well pleasing in sight to Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen. Be not dismayed, what ye have tired and just said by the family of song. God will take care of you. Shall we sing? Be not dismayed, what 
be tired. God will take care of you.
Ja, ik heb het zo weer in. Ik heb het zo weer in. Ik They come with you, I don't tell them what. I said, I just did it. You show me, I don't know. Yeah. I did it, I don't know.